Nope, we don't get a bed to sleep on Haven. Well, unless you mean that. <laughs> I mean, we could take our pick back there. Look at it. Super comfortable. Forty-three AM. You'd sleep some sleep on the bottom bunk. I think I'd sleep on the bottom bunk just so I could like use the rest of the space. The top bunk really does not look comfortable at all. I had to try a new Visa card, seems to be working. <laughs> Definitely working. Uh, Emmanuel GT5, how are you doing? Welcome back. hated bunk beds. Eh, yeah, they're useful. My experience of bunk beds, like with kids and stuff, is there's always a fight over who sleeps on the top bunk. <laughs> you did all the map mods apart from Italia, White House Gaming. Just have a look at the requirements on their website. Traffic rat, thank you for seven months. Seven. Doing fluid mechanics homework. Youch. That's the kind of maths that make my head hurt. <laughs> huh. How is Bernoulli anyway? There's an overhead sign that said 50 on it, and yet it's still 90. I don't get that. Doing computer science homework. That's more my kind of homework. Not as good as my coffee, but it's a nice coffee.
50 Ks and your GPS show 90. No, the, the GPS is in um, Ks as well. You don't miss homework whatsoever. You would go back to get your masters an instance if it meant no homework. <laughs> well. I think you're looking at it the, the wrong way. I think the problem is... I don't know, if if you choose to be on a course, then homework is nothing more than just study when you're not on site, you know? But if you love the subject and you, and you want to be there, then it doesn't matter where you study. Homework, library work, on-site work, sit in the park work, it doesn't matter. Simulator 5115 just wanted to give a little support to let you know how much you enjoy watching your streams. Uh, we'll have to go back to work soon, so won't be able to watch as often, but we'll still say stopped. Uh, hope you are well. Dude, thank you so much. Thank you. Very very kind delivery. And staying sub even though you can't watch very uh, often is still, like, super appreciated. Thank you. I hope you'll be able to catch some more in the in the near future simulator. You didn't mind homework, but I don't agree with it over the holiday. Yeah. I used to hate that as well. I, I remember at school, you you were you know, you're coming up to like two week holiday, Easter holiday or something. And you'd got to Wednesday, and so far you'd not been given any homework, and you were thinking, oh, this is going to be a good holiday. And then Thursday, like, your English teacher's like, here's some homework. You need to read all this stuff. And you're like, what? Come on, miss. That's ridiculous. Like, that's too much. And then the lesson after, your maths teacher's like, here's a lot of homework. Like, oh, come on. My Friday, you know, you go home with your tail between your legs because you've got days of homework. And you're like, this sucks. I wanted to have a proper holiday. Sam already discussed that. How I feel about the CGI trailer. Was university or school less stressful? I think there's, things are just... They're hard to compare, Connor. Things are stressful in different ways. Seventh grade, why then? What the heck? Uh, I'm not going to Insomnia in March, but I'm probably going to go to the August one. to investigate a lot I think by the time you get to university uh, the expectation is that you're, you're much more of a self-start that's why they call it a lecture and not a lesson like they don't spoon feed you at university you're expected to go and do a lot of study outside of the lectures you know if you don't if you don't buy a book that's required it's up to you like nobody's gonna nobody's gonna be bothered it's gonna affect your work though
I think the principle is correct. Like, you, you're over 18, you've made a decision to be here. If you don't want to be here, we'll go, you know. <laughs> School's mandatory, university is not. Oh yeah, I'm already booked into Truckfest. I'll be both days at Truckfest. Oh, the books can get very expensive. What used to make me laugh the most in a kind of a not funny kind of way is when the, um, is when you get these, the, the occasional lecturer who was like, he was basically super lazy. At the end of the first week, he would say, uh, this is the book that I recommend you get. Oh, and the author just happens to be him. <laughs> and he's like, everything I'm going to teach you on the course is in this book anyway, so, you know, if you get the book, you should be fine. I was like, what? Just blatantly profiting out of the whole setup. I don't know, there's something wrong. To me, there's just something not right about being able to just recommend your own book on the on the lecture, on the course that you're on. It just feels a bit... It feels a bit wrong. <laughs> Yeah, well, you could PC Kelly at, at my uni, not a chance. There wasn't enough copies to rent from the library. Like every time you went to get a book from the library, it was already gone. Yeah, it's it's a conflict of interest. It really is, and I don't think it should have been allowed either. I remember, like, I was stuck on some coursework once in the universe, in the computer labs, and I went over to that guy. The one who was just, um, like, saying, go and buy my book. And I was asking him some questions, like, that I needed answers to. And he was trying to, like, he was trying to, like, brush me off. Like, he couldn't be bothered to answer the questions. So I basically, like, gave him a piece of my mind. I said to him, I said, well, how is it that you've not got time to answer my questions and to help me with this coursework, but you're okay with sitting there and writing your next book, which he was. he was. He was sitting there writing his next book. I said, why have you got time for that? But you've not got time for your students on your course. And at that point, he felt all a bit sheepish and helped me out. But by then I was like, oh, I'm just done with you, pal. Can't be bothered with him. He was the one, funnily enough, who um, thought that SSADM was a really great idea. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. <laughs> oh, collision time. Hello. <gasps> With a police car. Brilliant. Fantastic. <coughs> Are you mid-30s starting to go back to school part-time? Nothing wrong with that. A lot of people... A lot of people... Um, either mature late in life or want to go back and do something they didn't do very well when they were younger or just want to change of career like studying when you're old is a good thing never stop learning that's my motto SSADM, Structured Systems Analysis and Design Method. What a pile of pants. <laughs> it's basically the opposite of... It's, it's almost diametrically opposite to Agile. <laughs> it's the most waterfall of waterfall methods you can ever think of. <laughs> horrible oh, 
Having said that, Agile's not a cure for all ills either. Some of the managers that I used to work with seem to think that Agile is, is like an excuse to change your mind every two weeks. HV. Look at those flags. The way they're flapping like this. <laughs> it's a product owner you like Agile. I used to work with the product owner. I was the development manager. Flows water. Oh. You arrived at the same destination, that's uncanny. Globe troller, the little truck that could. It's doing all right now. We actually got some XP. Let's see what jobs we've got. Anyone's having issues watching ads a bit? Um, I don't have time to do it, to be honest. Ikea, back the same way. Down to Denmark. Hmm. Ooh, lamb stomachs. Ooh. Sounds grim. To the nut house. 13 tons of lamb stomachs. How many sheep did they kill? Meggy Joy, thank you very much for subbing. Welcome to the house, Meggy Joy. Thank you for your support. Thank you for the nutty welcome. Hmm. I might rest up till the morning and see uh, if I can find anything slightly more interesting. Are they for haggis? Why are they going to Sweden then? Why the why is there nothing going west to Norway? Oh there you go, finally. Pot flowers. Three tons of pot flowers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why is transmissions fragile cargo? Uh, double sub red dot eighty nine. Thank you for subbing. Welcome to the house, red dot. Thank you for subbing as well. Double sub hype, guys. Maggie Joy and red dot. Uh, James Paul Bean with 300 bits on the subject of education. It's the same for me in terms of getting out. If you don't want to be there as I'm studying motorsport engineering at college in my first year. Also, another news, the KFC chicken shortage is still ongoing. <laughs> beans. Might take some beans down to Denmark. To the nut house. Triple sub. Oh my god. Sean Vines 1. Welcome to the nut house. You are triple subbed. Three subs in two minutes. Thank you so much for the support, guys, and thank you for the massive nutty welcome. Ooh, a metal coil. 
I've even seen that trailer before. Try and find an interesting trailer. Where's that one? Uh, uh, Boat of Sala. Hmm. I don't mind teleporting to get something more interesting. I'm good, thank you, Sean. I'm good. Didn't somebody ask about Windblades? Earlier, I'm sure they did. Might go and do that. Quite fancy that. Not done Windblades for ages. Go to Oscar. Hopefully that's going to find it. Oh my god, what did I just do? Uh-oh. I don't know where I am. Rip. I don't know if... <laughs> I'm going to have to start again. I don't know if I'm ab above or below now. Let's try that. Jeez, what is that speed set to? There we go. I think it's when you when you're um, teleporting around. It's very easy to get completely lost. Down. Whiteland, I'm cheating specifically for you, mate. Because I know you like cheating. been here before. I remember this trailer against these logs. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Could be an issue with this one. Hmm. Well, I have to do it that way. Because uh, the job didn't spawn very well. Well, I had to cheat then, Lava Tube. I didn't really have a choice. Although it wasn't really a cheat, that was more me fixing the game. It's not the same. Is it damaged? I hope not. Yep, it's already 1% damage. Thank you very much, game. <laughs> Spawned it in with a penalty. GG. Right. Why is it that I've got a, a bacon flashing in my cab, even though I have no glass in the back of my cabin? I've turned that off, that's just annoying. Well, Tommy, I'm not so much bothered about the money, but I am bothered about the XP. Don't forget, it will take XP away as well. 
even though I did nothing wrong. Yeah, there's a roof with a window, but light doesn't go up and light there. It doesn't do that. Look, how does the how does that little beacon right at the back here, right at the back of my trailer, how does that shed light into my cockpit? That's the question. that's a lane or not. I'm going to say no. It's a magic beacon, obviously. Wait, what is this guy doing? Are you crazy? Are you completely crazy? I actually saw one of these in real life a few days, uh, about a week and a half ago. One of these, it was being hauled by a daff. Jack Griff, thank you for the resume. And I saw a, uh, what was it? Like a massive, not a transformer, what was it now? It was like a massive industrial steel thing. I don't know exactly what it was. He had the beacons going as well, oversized load. Thank you for 17 months, Jack. Coach is getting a bit close. You're in Nebraska, but Iowa has tons of wind turbine farms. Cable car hype. Uh, yeah, most trucks in Europe are, are um, cab overs. The more compact and manoeuvrable. Yeah, I saw that little corner. Look at that view.
I know it is. Most of the opposite in the States. This is Sweden, bad wall. This lurking doesn't work for you. <laughs> that car was floating, did you see that? The little car on the right part, it was about a foot off the ground. Cadilloth, put your feet up. You follow my car building on my summer car. When I go to start the car, I hear a tick sound. Any ideas? A tick sound? Are you on the latest bill, Sean Vines? Did you watch my latest video, which mentioned the thing that you have to do? That when I when I made those building guide videos, Sean, that was the game has changed quite a bit since then. There's a few things extra you have to do now. 30? What the heck? 30? Might as well just get out and walk. You wouldn't be surprised if Elon Musk is in my flying cars. I think automated flying cars are, are uh, almost guaranteed to happen, Chris. I don't get that. The whole border control, like, there wasn't a border. The speed limit was 30, there was nobody there. Doesn't make any sense. Northern Alex, 98,000. Yay! 2K! 2K. Can't wait for the next recording session, Alex. We need to schedule that this week, actually. Yeah. We need to schedule that. We need to finish that map off. Congrats, Alex. Thank you for the support. I hope you're, uh, Hope you hit 100k real soon. You need to do a video though. You need to get it ready. By the way, Paul, your MSC famous. I keep seeing your guides pop up for people that need to help on Steam. Really? I don't. Mine aren't really guides though, are they? They're more like follow-alongs. Flying cars will not make a noise level. Just think about thousands of cars taking off. Will not make a noise level. What do you mean? Yeah, but Whiteland, they just make a lot of sense, don't they? We're running out of space on the ground. If you fly things, you don't need to build any roads. You can go flying over forests in straight lines. You can take it direct over non-built-up areas. And technology being what it is white and it's going to get quieter and quieter and quieter just as it does in the aviation industry you need to kind of don't assume that that things are going to be solved with our current tech things are going to be solved with like better technology it's inevitable because it needs to happen a ton more fuel than energy. Using current technology, yes. You don't know what's around the corner with technology. That's the thing. You still see all the links to the videos and think I hate all that guy. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the, you're going to get drones before you get flying cars, absolutely. Drones are, uh, are going to start moving f parcels around, probably. That'll be the first thing. Move the freight around. Prove the technology by moving freight. Because that way, if it falls out the sky, it doesn't matter. As much. <laughs> but once they've got it working reliably, it's only a matter of time before people get in them. BCS, Paul, Cavo was in Europe has nothing to do with the with the manu with the what? The manu build tight. What? There are rules for how long a truck must be in Europe. With cab overs it means your trailer may be a bit longer, which means more good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a length thing as well, BCS. Yeah, absolutely. But a lot of the places that you deliver to in Europe are down very compact roads and challenging, you know, everything's a lot smaller. So there's another reason. But yeah, you're right. I mean, if a shorter truck is obviously a longer trailer. matter if they drop your Costa Latte delivery. <laughs> can you not can you not see a world where you order something online and, and a drone just flies it over to your house within hours? Can you not can you not even it seems like a, a thing that's gonna happen to me, you know? I mean yes the drones will be flying down specific airways in the sky. Yes it will be controlled by the CAA and the FAA and all the rest of it. But it's going to happen. Obviously, there'll be some countries that'll be like, no, 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 not in our, not in our country. We're not having that. I think Amazon are trialing it. That they've got it in certain places. Yeah. 3D print will replace deliveries. Not really floaty. It's not, I mean, if... <laughs> it's not really going to replace it, is it? You can't, you can't print a circuit board. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's lots of things that you cannot 3D print. You don't have the materials in a 3D printer. How do you, how do you print a graphics card? For example, that's that guy who drifts. Thank you very much for subbing. Welcome to the house, that guy. Thank you for the nutty welcome, guys. You can't print a coffee, yeah, but you wouldn't want a drone to deliver one either, really. <laughs> you can't print food. Why don't you try to print an orange? <laughs> Could get messy. Can a 3D printer print more 3D printers? Well, can you print a charged battery? <laughs> Using less energy than it took to print it. Shake and bake. Thank you for, for subbing as well. Double sub hype, guys. Thank you, shake and bake. Welcome to that house. Good evening, Mr. Kinducci. How are you doing? Have you been racing today? Subnautica you can, yeah. You print a nice girlfriend, lol. Solid Bond UK, welcome back. You can 3D print everything, just uh, put all the atoms in the correct order. Yeah, good luck with that.
blimey. You just finished a seven hour stream? That's weird. Oh, hang on. What time did I look? I must have just missed you because I was like, I looked on, oh no, it was about midday when I was looking. So yeah, I would have just missed you. How did it go? How was the racing? Rip. Fail. They've just 3D printed a house. <laughs> I presume they printed the components and not just print a house with a giant printer. It's very hard to see that back corner hitting the um, trailer though. Is it? It's going to be slightly off. Oh no, it's taking it. I'll have that. Jorgen from Norway, 35 months. Can I submit a My Summer Car Stream funny moment on YouTube video? I have a good moment. Can I submit a My Summer Car Stream funny moment? Oh. Um. Hmm. The problem with that, Jorgen, is that the people who only watch on YouTube will be very confused. And I did say from the series, not from Twitch. So I'll say no to that, Jorgen. Yeah, just make it from the series and then nobody gets confused by it. Ten thirty one AM. So what job we can get from here. Yeah, well don't forget the trailer lava tube already started off as one percent damage because it spawned it on top of a concrete pillar. So tusk tusk to you. And he did 0.6%. Hung! It's going back the other way though. Oh, why are you going back the other way? Square tubing, let's take that. Non-alcoholic beer. If I take that trailer, I'm going to pour it down the sink. What's the point? Take that. Tron time to Dremen. Which, funnily enough, is coming from here or over the way? Over the way there, I think. Fifty centimeters of snow in Trondheim. Yeah, while we've not got um, active sky weather installed, so we've not got live weather. One day they'll put live weather in this game. Imagine that. How hard can it be to make a call? To fire a call out to the many, many, many online web resources that you can hit that will give you a weather report. And then you just decode it and boom, implement the weather. It really isn't very hard. Yep, if there's cake involved, nippy, I'm the. No, Racing W, there's no active weather mod, mate. Only in the flight sim world. You may ask why it's not in Eurotruck, though. It can't be hard to implement. Maybe they just never thought of it. Maybe they should make me the product owner. 
but then I can sneak in scripting. <laughs> Alexandru, thank you for 17 months. Uh, another month closer to the golden nut. Really surprised with the truck today. Pleasantly surprised. Best wishes and keep doing what you're doing. Well, it's a Mazda truck. Mazda doesn't do rubbish stuff. Alpha Lima Echo, welcome back. Globe Troll, a live weather mod for the future world truck sim hype. Hey. Shall I go? Okay, I'll go. Okay. You're officially the worst driver in the game. And he's the second worst. You damaged my trailer, you scumbag. Fly sims are one-to-one -one scale, your truck is much smaller. It doesn't matter, Chris. It doesn't matter. All you got to do, Chris, is look at the cities, right? Whenever you're in a particular city, you can look up the four-digit code. Yeah? This is how the aviation world does it. Look up the four-digit code and find the nearest metal report. It's easy, Chris. It doesn't matter what the scale is. You're not going to check it, like, every second. You're going to check it every five minutes, or or maybe only check it when you get into a city. It's just not hard to do. Uh-oh, I thought it crashed then. Just an idea. We should do a shared copy EDD after EGL on the Q400. Are you on about P3D or X plane, Alex? Wait, why is he trying to get me to go down that lane and not this lane? Why is the sat nav doing that then? Why is it taking a longer route? You see that? That's not. I ain't got P3D installed at all yet, Alex. It could be some time before I'm set up for that, but it could be fun. I like flying the dash. As long as you do the fuel calculations correctly, it's all good. 